Number one, the Royal Irish Academy. The Royal Irish Academy is Ireland's foremost learned society and it's been associated with the great names of Irish literature and science for over 200 years. The Academy was begun in 1785 to promote the study of science, polite literature and antiquities. Today it's active in the sciences, the humanities and the social sciences. The founding members were drawn from Ireland's academics, nobility, bishops and parliamentarians and within a year, King George III had granted them a royal charter, and the Academy retains its royal title to this day in recognition of that long history. From the start, the members bought and donated manuscripts, antiquities and books, which the Academy collected and preserved for the nation. And the antiquities collection was used to start the National Museum of Ireland, and we'll hear more about that shortly. The founding president of the Academy was James Caulfield, the first Earl of Charlemont and there's a large portrait of Charlemont in the alcove above where you're standing. He was renowned as a well-travelled, cultivated and influential man, and he had a townhouse on Dublin's north side. It's now the Hugh Lane Gallery of Modern Art. And his garden pavilion for his country house was near Clontarf that survives. It's the unique Casino at Marino. It's one of the finest examples of Palladian architecture, and it's open to the public and well worth visiting. Surprisingly, for someone so influential, Charlemont was nervous about speaking in public, and this kind of held back his career in the Irish House of Lords. Yet he still became Commander-in-Chief of the Irish Volunteers, and with his friend Henry Grattan, another Academy member, he campaigned for an independent Irish Parliament and against the Act of Union. Other Academy members down the years included Francis Beaufort, the man who invented the Beaufort wind scale, the architect James Gandon, the poet W.B. Yeats, the Irish Nobel physicist Ernest Walton, and the statesman Eamon de Valera. Membership of the Academy is the highest academic honour in the country. To join, you must be elected by the other members. You have to be living in the Republic of Ireland or in Northern Ireland, and obviously to have made a significant contribution to your field. Today, there are over 440 members, with 20 new members elected every year around St. Patrick's Day, 10 from the humanities and 10 from the sciences. Women were first elected as full members in 1949 when four women scholars were admitted. Before then, women could only be honorary members, but they included women like the astronomer Caroline Herschel, the science writer Mary Somerville and the novelist Mariah Edgeworth. Other honorary members have included Darwin and Einstein, Wordsworth and Longfellow and Crick and Watson. Today, the Academy is still governed by a President and a Council of Members. It has a staff of about 80, and it's funded primarily by the Higher Education Authority. The Royal Irish Academy is the independent academic body for all of Ireland. It's a very busy institution, as you'll see from the publications and notices in the hallway. It represents Ireland internationally, coordinates research projects, provides expert advice to government, organises conferences and public talks, publishes academic journals and maintains one of the country's finest research libraries. And that's only a fraction of what happens here. We'll tell you more about some of this work on our tour. But before we leave this hallway, let me tell you something about this elegant Georgian building which has been home to the Academy since 1852.